Welcome everyone, uh, welcome to this new tutorial. In this video we're gonna learn how to compute uh, relatedness in R using the EconGeo package. So as I already mentioned, relatedness is a very powerful tool that basically allows you to know whether uh, two products are you know, tend to be bought by the same customers or whether two economic activities tend to be produced by the same regions where the two technologies tend to be invented by the same inventors. So it basically allows you to map uh, the economic structure of a company, a region, uh, or, or the entire world if you look at uh, international trade, for instance. So this is a very powerful tool, and uh, this is also the basis, for instance, of the, the Amazon algorithm. So this is something that has uh, many, many, many applications. So feel free to, to think about any kind of real-world problem that you might try to, to solve using um, network thinking and using, in this case, the concept and the measures of relatedness. So let's start with um, data that we are familiar with. So let's load uh, a matrix that tells you basically whether two products are bought by the same customers. So remember, we had um, this, uh, this data where Pierre, Ron, Andrea, David, Cesar, and Paola, uh, they, buy, they buy different type of products. So, you know, Pierre, for instance, buys surfboards and shorts and water, while uh, David buys surfboard, shorts, and water as well. So this is basically explained and represented in this matrix. So from this, this matrix, uh, what we're going to do first, we, we're going to uh, load the Decon Geo package because this is uh, the package where you will find the uh, different functions that allow you to compute uh, relatedness. So very, very first step, it's very important, um, very first step, we're going to look at, we're going to use the function called co-occurrences. So this function, you just type co-occurrences and in between parentheses you indicate M, will basically give you whether two, um, whether uh, how many products are bought by uh, two different customers. So in this case, Pierre and Ron, they only buy one time the same product. So we can look at the metrics here and you see that Pierre is here. This is the vector of uh, products bought by Pierre. This is the, ve this are the vector here of uh, products bought by Ron. And you see they don't overlap very much, right? So where Pierre doesn't buy a tie, doesn't buy a book, but Ron does, then Pierre bought by a surfboard and a short, but Ron doesn't. Well, they both buy water. Okay, so they both buy water here. And this is why you only get a one here. Well, when Pierre and David, they buy, you know, three products together, they buy surfboard, short, and water. Okay, so this is uh, what you have. So basically, you, this, um, this first metrics of core currencies tell you in a way whether two customers have the same preferences. Um, now, what we're going to look at here, of course, that might be interesting to you. So that might be something you want to focus on. Uh, well, most of the time we actually focus on relatedness between products, uh, so between tie, book, surfboard, and that's why uh, that's what we use to there make recommendation. So in the business world, this is being used to make recommendations uh, about like products. You know, like customers that buy this product might also like this product. So this is very powerful. Um, in economics and especially macroeconomics, we use this tool uh, more to look at to do like policy recommendation and to try to understand what type of economic activity uh, a country, a city or region might be able to do next. Uh, so, but what we care about is really um, the relationship between economic activities or between products. So for that, what we're going to do is like, we're going to use this uh, function co-occurrence. Huh? Uh, we're going to create an object C. But instead of looking at M inside the brackets, we're going to put, uh, we're going to look at the transpose of M. And doing this, we will be able to look at co-occurrences, not between uh, customers, but between products. So what we see is like um, books and, uh, and, and tie, they really tend to be bought uh, very frequently together. So you see, Ron bought a tie and a book, Andrea bought a tie and a book, 
Cesar bought a tie in the book. Paula bought a tie in the book. That's why you get a four here. Okay. Well, a tie and a surfboard doesn't look like, you know, it goes very often together. Okay, this is good. Um, and you have to basically, whenever you want to look at uh, the function, and I invite you to do that now, to, to pause and look at the function, you basically just you know, type the name of the function here, and I will give you the function uh, details. So basically, this is what the program is doing underneath the function when you type co-occurrence. So first look at that, take a moment to understand the different steps. Um, now, what you have now, so this is the first step, you compute a matrix of co-occurrence from like a two-bond network to get, you know, how often two economic entities like products or technologies, they tend to co-appear together. Now, this is good, this is the basis. Now, there is a problem. You have some um, economic activities that are just very large, and by definition, they will co-occur with many of the products, all right, like water in this case. So this is interesting to have a matrix of co-occurrence. It's already very powerful, but we need to trim that a little bit. And to trim that a little bit, what we're going to do, we're going to normalize co-occurrences. So that's this term here. So we're going to normalize co-occurrences. So in that sense, uh, we're going to make sure that the number of co-occurrence that we observe is higher than the number of co-occurrences we can expect just by chance. And this function here, function called relatedness, that needs uh, a co-occurrence matrix as an input, is basically what will give you the relatedness between products. So if you look at now relatedness here, well, we have something very different. Uh, because in this case, what we see is that, um, well, we see, for instance, that Thai and Book have a level of relatedness of 1.6. So what it means in this case is that uh, Thai and Book, they co-occur more frequently than what you would expect by chance. Uh, just uh, if uh, a Book and uh, uh, Thai would just be bought uh, at the same time by the same customer uh, as frequently as you would expect by chance, uh, then you will have a 1. So 1 you know, tells you that we expect them to be both together like 50 times and we observe 50 times okay well they're not related they're just you know neither related nor unrelated there is nothing there um, now a surfboard and tie they tend to be both together less frequently than what you expect um, by chance so they might not be related okay um, and you see already like here you know water and short even though they were both together very frequently now that we account for the fact that water is bought with everything, we get almost um, yeah. one. And uh, this is just a very small matrix. But if you will have a larger matrix, you know, you will get uh, basically, um, uh, you will get something really, really close to one, uh, even like just, just one. So in this case, um, we, uh, we're going to use this to, to map the relatedness uh, between entities. And this is basically what will be the source of the of the product space, the technology space, all the literature you, you're familiar with. So what we can we can do here, for instance, you know, uh, we can say, okay, well, let's let's set a threshold. Um, let's say that if um, you know, uh, let's let's create a new object R, you know, and use uh, our relatedness as an input. And let's say that everything uh, below below one, you know, uh, everything below one will equal zero. So what we do here, we just set a threshold in this case, and then we get something like this. Okay. So basically, if it's below one, it's not related. So I don't want this zero point fifty one. And what I can do uh, similarly, everything above one. You know, I don't care if it's like uh, very related or not. Uh, I'm just going to say it's related. So then I'm just, you know, having something binary and I have this now. Okay. So I have this matrix which tells me whether two items are related or not. And I can plot this. So remember, I just use uh, iGraph package. I create an object uh, G1 from uh, my relatedness matrix and then I just plot G1 here. And that's what I guess. Okay, so I get uh, water related to surfboard. Uh, I have surfboard related to short. 
So remember that water is related to everything here because it's still slightly below one, above one, but I could also use a threshold of 1.2 and then water will become isolated, right? Uh, and then I have indeed my book and my tie, well, they're related, that makes sense. My surfboard and my short, they are related, that, that still makes uh, sense. So this is what you do to basically uh, create the product space, the technology space, um, and to look at the relatedness between entities. And you're going to use this uh, as a tool to make predictions. So that's why we care about it. So of course, it's interesting you know, to know whether two items are related. We can do that for languages. Uh, this is very interesting. But this is also very powerful as an application because now you can use this to make prediction, to make prediction of you know, the type of new language I'm going to learn next, the type of new uh, product I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy next, or the type of new economic activity I'm going to uh, produce next. So now what you can do is just practice by uh, looking at, uh, uh, if, you, if you open the documentation, by putting quotation mark between before RCA, what you're going to have is uh, documentation like popping up here. And what you're going to do is just copy and paste uh, this uh, example here. Okay, so now you have something called math. Uh, and first, you're going to co compute the comparative advantage, right? So you get a binary matrix. You can also look for location quotient, just look at documentation to make sure that you know uh, what is RCA. And from this matrix, you can play a little bit around and repeat the exercise we just uh, did. And in the next video, we will basically see how we can use this information uh, to make predictions.